Floss Tube. I thought that I would take the opportunity today to do a quick tutorial on how I make my cross stitch cards. Now, I'm not a card maker. I've never made cards before I cross stitched and I only make cards because I cross stitch. It's like pretty much all of my finishing. I'm not a sewer, I'm not a framer, but I have learned how to do some basic sewing and I have learned how to do some framing because I cross stitch. So I started making cards a couple of years ago and I looked around for tutorials on how to turn my cross stitches into cards, but most of the tutorials I came across were specific card making things and I didn't want to go to the expense of buying all this card making stuff like stamps and decals and this and that whatever um, I just wanted to use basic stuff to make basic cards so this is what I've sort of put together as my card making kit and I have um, a couple of things I'm going to share with you and just run through how I'm going to make a card it's a good friend's 40th birthday party tonight and I've stitched her a card and I thought oh, I would just make a card so um, this is what you'll basically need. You'll need a cross stitch pattern that you've stitched and I'll show you where I got that from in a minute. You'll need some fabric scissors. I use iron on interfacing. That's optional but recommended. You'll need some card making paper stock and some printed paper. It needs a double sided tape. You can use some um, decorative paper edges. They're also optional but they're nice. Um, you'll need some kind of cutting implement. You can use uh, a, a cutting implement like this or you can use um, just a pair of scissors and you'll need a ruler. So I'll show you what I've done with the pattern first. So what I did is I chose a pattern from, sorry for the noise, I chose a pattern from this book which is quick to stitch cross stitch cards and I've shown this in other videos and I did a, um, a review of the book as well. So I chose to do um, a card from this book and it is called somewhere here. Ah. I'm not showing you the pattern, it's called Naughty 40. And you can see I changed the colour. Sorry, I've got that upside down. Um, I changed the colour because I didn't like those. I thought they were a bit drab. So I changed to these brighter colours because that suits my friend much better. Um, and the colours I used, if you're interested, are a green 954, pink 603, yellow 445 and purple 210. So I just stitched that. It's just a small design. Um, and it's specifically made for cards. It's just seven and a half centimeters square on 14 count, 40 by 40 stitches. So I've stitched that and then you can see here, I have stitched a little quick back stitch line in a square. Now that is because I'm gonna fringe this edge of this cross stitch. So I'm going to do a little fringe around here and that's going to stop my um, fabric from fraying any further than that line. So what I've also done, because I do this with all my cross stitch pieces, is I've used some iron-on interfacing. This is just from Spotlight here in Australia. I'm sure you can get it wherever, but iron-on interfacing. I use this for all my finished pieces. I will put interfacing if I'm framing, I'll use interfacing if I'm doing a no sew cube, uh, cushion. I, I really do like to use it mostly on things that are gonna be exposed and not covered in glass. So cards, um, cushions, that sort of stuff. But I do it for everything. It's really, really thin. This, it's only, it's thin. And one side is bumpy and that's where the glue is and that's the side that you put down and then the top side is smooth. Um, it's really thin, doesn't, so it doesn't add any bulk to your piece as well, so it's really good. So what I did with that is I cut out a piece that was exactly the same size as the ins inside edge of that um, backstitch border, and I just ironed it on. And that just secures your piece. I think it just makes it that little bit more secured, 
um, and it's going to help with any kind of thread being caught and pulled out and I just think it also it makes a bit of a um, helps it so you can't see through that that material um, just makes it that little bit better I just like it secures everything so what I'm going to do is I've taken so I've, this is the um, colored paper and what I'm going to do with this is this as an example I'm going to cut this out and I'm going to mount it onto a piece of paper like this so I can see that this is the size of my piece of paper so I need this to be smaller than that so we can see an edge of the paper around there so I'm going to do about three squares three squares out from that back stitch line I'm going to actually cut and I'll do that now I find Ada is really good for cards because it's so sturdy and holds its shape so I prefer to do cards in Ada but of course you can do it in weave and weave or whatever but um, I don't know I like the Ada for this type of thing so there we go I've cut out my square and now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to fray this edge so you're going to get this nice fringe effect around your little cross stitch piece so you just grab the bits and they just pull off like that I mean we've all done this accidentally when we're stitching but this time we're doing it on purpose and you can make this fringe you know one square wide or you can make it however however big you want the fringe for this I'm just doing three squares so there we go so that's just given us a nice little tidy fringe um, and I just think it looks cute on the cards okay so now we're going to choose our paper so I bought these um, little bits of they're just little um, printed paper I guess they're for cards um, just from my local two dollar shop my, from the reject shop and I think they were two dollars a pad um, and I just use them for doing cards anyway I think we're going to do something from here because this is a nice bright set and um, a piece of paper from this and I've chosen this one here which is just some nice purple hearts and you can see that that's going to give us plenty of nice border around and we're going to make a square card so what we need to do is take a piece of white cardstock so what's going to happen is I'm going to make this into a square I'm going to cut it make it into a square I'm going to mount that on it and that's going to be our cut so it's really simple but it looks so effective and I, I don't want to buy all these materials and make these expensive cards because I can go and buy a card for a couple of dollars so and some really beautiful cards for a couple of dollars so I just want this to be simple and quick you can also buy these aperture cards I'll just show you these quickly um, and when I get the opportunity I'll do you a I'll do another video showing you how to make an aperture card but you can buy these pre-made um, for a couple of dollars all sorts of places have them cheap two dollar shops um, your craft shops things like that and what you do in this case is an aperture card it's got a window cut out and you wouldn't cut out the fringe but you'd basically mount a piece inside that and you get a really tidy well that's not really showing you properly but you understand what I mean and then that would be your card anyway um, these are also good for just putting photos in um, but I'm not doing an aperture I'm doing this one um, so with the cardstock we need to make that into a square so um, we need to cut it into a square size so it is going to be because it's a4 it is going to be 29.7 centimeters I think yeah 29.7 centimeters is how wide an a4 is going to be so um, basically let's say it's 30 centimeters just for ease of whatever so we want to make this basically a 15 centimeter square card which is about five and a quarter five and three quarter inches approximately so we need to measure 15 centimeters and do a cut and it's going to be basically a square close enough close enough for my book anyway like I said I'm not a no professional card maker but we're gonna make something that looks pretty damn good so this here um, these are really good cutters you can use you know guillotine style 
um, or whatever, or just a pair of scissors if you want to get you know, really basic about it. So we're going to do 15 centimeters is what we want to do. So this way here, we need to, oh, I need to measure because that's only 10 centimeters, so that's not going to give it to me. So 15 centimeters. We're going to want to measure the 15 centimeters and using a pencil or I use a pacer. I'm going to make a little mark. 15 and then a little mark at 15. Put this into our little fancy dancy thingy. And that's our edge there. So that's our cutting edge right there. So we'll push it up against the top. This little arrow down here is going to show us our cutting edge. And we press down and you get a beautiful straight line. Beautiful. Those little things make things easy. And these are cheap. I picked this up. I actually bought this at a garage sale and it was new in the bag, in the packet and I got it for a dollar. So this is the kind of investment I've made in card making. Um, so now we've got a square and we can see now, we're going to fold that. Now, there's a thing in um, card making world called a, they call it a bone. And basically, it's a little bit of plastic that helps get crisp edges in your cards. Now, I don't have a bone because I haven't gone and purchased one of these things. And I'm sure they're only a couple of dollars. But I've got this spatula at home that I use. So that's what I'm going to use today. So... That line doesn't look quite straight to me, so I'm just going to... straight. I might cut another teeny bit off it. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to fold it to make a square card. Okay, now you're meant to take your bone and do this and it's meant to smooth out that edges. So if you want to invest in that, Go for your life. Anyway, so there we go. We've got our card. Basic card. Nothing fancy yet. It's going to get a bit fancier. So then I'm going to take my piece of paper and it's obviously really this basically the same size. So what I want to do with this is I'm going to take my other little slight investment that I made in card making and that are some paper edges. This investment was $2. Once again at a garage sale I bought a set of six of these. Here they are. And I was charged $2 for that. Brand new in the packet. So once again no great investment but these are a great brand actually the Fiskars. So I'm going to do the mini scallop edge I think. All the clouds. Mm -hmm. There's a wave. Might be a bit little. Maybe I'll do the bigger. Might do this one. Clouds. So what I want to do is I want to cut a straight, well pretty much a straight edge. I only want to have a little bit of white showing around, maybe that, around the edges and then it'll be a nice little scalloped edge and then we're going to stick that in the middle. So I'm just going to freehand this and keep it as straight as I can, just following the same line in the pattern. I'm not worried if it's not too perfect. It is a homemade card after all. Trying to get my scallops even. Okay, so 
there we go. Just winging it, not worrying about it too much. We've just cut out a nice little scalloped piece of paper. And then we're just going to mount that on there. Okay, so what we're going to use to do that is simple double-sided tape. Magic. Love it. So I'm just going to take this here. You could, of course, you could do some layered paper. So you could do that with, you know, something like that and then put your piece in the middle. Or something like, um, there's another cute one in here I thought about doing. Little ice creams with that. I mean, that would look pretty cute and I'm still thinking about it. Should we double it? Mm, it's tempting, isn't it? Hmm. What do you think, guys? Should we do that? Or should we do that? Or should we do that? This is what I love about card making. You can make it up on the spot. No, I definitely put that there. And that. Mm. And there's pineapples in here too. Might be better because I don't. There's blue on those ice creams, and I don't have blue in the design. I think we're going to do it. Let's add some pineapples. I think I'll do the same edge. I'll do the cloud edge. And what we want to do is, I basically want want there to there. So that is 14 centimetres, that is about nine and a half. So really I want the pineapples to be about 12 centimetres wide. So on the back of that I'm going to mark out roughly one and a half. Okay, so now I've got my line marked out on this one. I'm going to take my trusty scissors again. Our pineapples. Oh, I like them, they're cute. So that is now going to be our card. Made it a little bit more snazzy, didn't it? So we're going to have that with our pineapples and with our naughty 40 on the front. Okay, so we'll take our double sided tape And we'll start off with the bottom layer, which will be the purple. And then we just pop that along the edge. Nothing too complicated. Just run a bit of double sided tape around the edge and thinking which one we might have at the front. This one. And the tops is obviously going to be the heart. We know the direction. Just take off the backing paper off the double sided tape. I really like this skinny mounting tape, um, double sided tape. And that was only. Oh gosh, that was nothing I bought from a craft store. And then I just go by eye and stick that on. There we go. So there's our hearts. 
Now we're going to take our little pineapple paper and do the same. So there's our pineapples. Now because it's only a card and it's only just going to be displayed for, well, I don't know, some people might display it for a long time or whatever, but it doesn't have to be, you know, you don't have to stick it down with a million pieces of tape or worry about being near the edge or whatever. It doesn't matter. This will be more than enough to hold it. So our pineapple's up, our heart's up. Oh, we're just going to... Put that on. So there we go. And then for our final layer, obviously, will be our little cross stitch piece, which is going to go smack in the middle. And we're just going to use the same double sided tape for that. Now, if you're making this to be an ornament or something similar, I probably wouldn't use double-sided tape because I don't think it would probably be strong enough to hold something that's going to be hung on a Christmas tree or whatever every year. But for a birthday card, I think I think double-sided tape is really easy. It's really tidy, unlike glue, which can get everywhere. It's just really easy to use. And you get nice straight lines if you take your time. And I'm just going to do a little bit across the middle as well, just because this is the top layer. We don't want this bit coming off, do we? Okay, so I'll take that backing paper off. Okay, that was probably the trickiest part of the whole thing. Okay, now without putting our fingers too much over the stickiness because that's going to make it less sticky. Just eyeball it and press. Voila! Birthday card done. I'm really happy with that. I think it looks really cute. I'll just write a message in the middle and that's it. Love it. Well, I hope that was helpful anyway. Just how to make a quick little cross stitch card without too much fuss, without too much expense, without too much equipment. I mean, even if you didn't have this scalloped edge, if you didn't own these kind of scissors, well, you just cut it out straight and it would still look fine. Um, but it gives you the basic way of how to finish off a piece of cross stitch and how to mount it anyway. So I hope that's been helpful for you and I'll see you next time. Bye.